Fire and Security Personnel for Events, 14808 East 14th Street, Alameda County, Assessor's Parcel Number 77E-1593-8, D. Dillman, Applicant and Property Owner, SA-1 South Area District. And uh, may we have the staff report from uh, Planner Panoranda. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, board members. As introduced, it is the uh, Bow Theater's modification application that are used for permit. On the screen is the subject property just south of 148. This is East 14th Street. Uh, next door is Enterprise Rent a Car. Uh, various commercial buildings uh, to the north. Uh, the, uh, this is a thousand foot mailing radius that we did for the outreach for the mail out. It goes to the uh, post office site down south to the flyers at the, excuse me, to the north and then uh, flyers station to the south at uh, Bancroft and East 14th. This is the aerial picture, just gives you a perspective of the bow and the uh, basal, the business association for South San Leandro, this was a segment or portion of it and then the House and Foothill Homeowners Association for the residential neighborhoods uh, that, that flank East 14th to the east and to the west. As we had discussed in May, these are the proposed events or performances. It's specific to a list of the theatrical show, dance, recital, comedy act, the uh, music or concert, magic show conference, lecture of motion picture using the big screen projection uh, inside the bow theater. In our work session, uh, the board expressed these are the uh, what I've highlighted as the uh, important points from that work session. The uh, board's concern was safety, the frequency of those new events we just saw on the list, uh, serving of alcohol, the parking situation and security. Since that work session and your visit, the, uh, the improvements at the platform have been completed for the safety of the performers so we don't have to set a limit from one to three or, or four to 10. The guardrails and handrails, the exiting, uh, the, the lights, you know, have all been installed so you can have, you know, the uh, 10 performers you know, on the platform. Uh, in addition, there's gonna be the requirement that the exit doors are going to have to be posted, and especially to the uh, north side of the building that faces 148th Avenue, they're going to have to be a bollard to make sure a vehicle doesn't park in front of the, uh, the double doors that exit north off of the platform into, into that side of the building. The frequency, it's, it's remained the same as we reviewed back in May. It's going to be four for the events or performances per month, where there may be up to three shows in a day. And this frequency uh, provision, however, doesn't apply to showing motion pictures or televised uh, events on the big screen, which typically already occurs inside the theater building. The proposed hours, those have also remained the same. Uh, they are cognizant of businesses, so as you see, on Mondays through Fridays, you know, in consideration of their businesses, the events or performances don't occur until about 5 p.m. And then uh, being aware of residents and the work day and school day, you see the uh, hours from Sunday through Thursday will end at, uh, at 10 p.m. And then on, uh, for the weekends, Friday and Saturday, you have the extended hours to 12 midnight, to 12 a.m. is 12 midnight. And uh, once a year, these conditions don't apply. It would allow the New Year's Eve uh, event to go up until uh, 1 a.m. in the morning. <coughs> also, uh, the, uh, the alcohol would only be limited to fundraising events where there's catered food and a nonprofit organization, so 501c3. Uh, nonprofit corporation or association has to demonstrate that with ABC. 
the uh, form is the ABC 221, you know, the 281. We came to realize in discussion with ABC has been a typo all of these, these years. So it's a 221. I double check that because I did discuss this process with the uh, ABC officers, uh, inspectors. They're very thorough in their review. They uh, require, in addition to the application from the nonprofit, their 501c3 papers from the Secretary of State and the bylaws that accompany the uh, papers uh, from the state. Uh, there's, uh, again, the application review is 10 to 20 days. So whoever's going to have a fundraiser, whether hypothetically it's at Davis Street, Family Resource or Girls Inc., Boys or Girls Club, they'll have to plan in advance and make sure they meet the uh, ABC timeline for uh, obtaining this 221 special daily beer and or wine license. And uh, since the work session, because there was a concern from the board and from, uh, from the public, we've recommended a a frequency limit or a limit of uh, two of those per month to these fundraisers so that's that's 24 for the year uh, as for parking you know the uh, zoning code for events and performances uh, entertainment it's the same as for the theater so there's no increase with, uh, with what's being proposed uh, recent recent events speaking with the applicant, have been from 50 to 200 persons in attendance. There hasn't been any uh, recent large uh, attendance. He's got seating for 800, but for these events, the, uh, the maximum he would seat or uh, have tickets for 75, 755 people. So the way it's been working out recently, the current on-street and some of the off-street parking have been able to absorb the, uh, the attendance being only at 50 to 200 uh, people. The, the applicant's going to go over with you their, their policies or what they implement to uh, you know, advise patrons to be mindful of the residents. They're trying to encourage parking along East 14th Street. And that brings me to the third point. The Engineering and Transportation Department are willing to lift the 9.30 p.m. parking restriction that is now on East 14th Street and extend that hour or those hours to 12 a.m. so it coincides with the 12 midnight, 12 a.m. weekend hours. That requirement was uh, reviewed by the Engineering and Transportation Department. They found that that's been around since the 70s and the, per the, the reason for the 9.30 was uh, because of the old, the old days when people used to cruise up and down East 14th Street. So, uh, so now, you know, it's something they are open to with a request, with a formal request from, uh, from the applicant. Now, I think uh, uh, Mr. Gilcrest will cover it in his correspondence, and it's also a request the uh, Homeowners Association has made. And then for the security requirement, the uh, applicant you know, has provided a, a draft security plan and it's by Security <coughs> Intelligence Specialist, SIS. And they're, they're licensed and registered with the state. And as we've worked it out with the uh, police department, we'll make sure that a security, security plan is reviewed and approved by the police department. Uh, in, in the conditions of recommendations for within 30 days, we uh, have something in place for uh, security at the events or performances. And then we have the additional uh, conditions that we discuss at the uh, work session. Uh, you know, we recommend a six-month review you know, to see if, you know, if there are any, uh, anything we may have forgotten or there are impacts on businesses or residents. Perhaps there's going to be a way, and we'll build we'll build this in so we can address whatever the you know the impacts can be, so we can still make it compatible, make the use compatible with the businesses and the residential neighbors. And then uh, the condition is still in there that uh, there would be an annual renewal, or prior to the annual renewal of the business license, the uh, 
applicant call for an inspection to make sure that all these conditions are still all in place and being abided by, by the applicant and the battle. The uh, conditions and restrictions make this proposal compatible with existing businesses and residents. The, the battle is a real prominent building on East 14th Street. The community in the past has expressed concern of its appearance. And this has been recently been addressed with the rehabilitation. The marquee has been refurbished. The, the exterior has been painted. The proposal appears to be an attempt to bring a variety of entertainment and enhance the vitality of the business district and at the same time address the safety requirements for patrons and performers uh, inside the building. Uh, with that, the staff recommendation is that the board adopt the recommended findings of fact and approve this uh, modification to the use permit subject to the recommended conditions of approval. But I do have some uh, supplementary items to bring up. Uh, I think I've left the supplementary memo at your, uh, at your seats, at your uh, the dais. There's a correction to the findings. Ms. Carey pointed out that I, I forgot to close the parentheses. I closed the parentheses to PLN 2008 on the second line, 00049. And uh, Mr. Crow and uh, Mr. Dillman pointed out that uh, for that second point, the correction to recommended condition of approval on page three of three, it's uh, to include that provision A, uh, I forgot to include that, a business license has been issued coupled with diligent progress evidencing a good faith intent to commence the uh, intended use. That's a standard wording that should be within that condition. Uh, then uh, the various communications I received was the first one, Linda De Denard, she emailed her support for the bow. She believes that uh, having the events and performances, the arts will make San Leandro appear more aggressive and improve this business community in, in San Leandro. In addition, to have more progressive, uh, to have a more progressive image would improve demographics and could attract more upscale and viable businesses into the city. Sheila Young called and expressed concern about alcohol being served for events, even though it will be for fundraising events only. Parking was also a concern with heavily attended concerts in the future, especially when you already have the two bars in the area, Club Caliente and La Oficina. Uh, you know, they have a, a good following or a number of patrons that go to their establishments. And then Kathy Sanchez, she's with the Marina Gardens Homeowners Association, she called and expressed her concern that the proposed use would impact police department, which is already stretched to the maximum without adding something else to their beat to patrol. So uh, she stated that the events and performances uh, don't seem to be appropriate uses. And uh, she also uh, pointed out that she believes there isn't adequate parking facilities uh, for the proposal. Esther Joseph, she's a resident on Marjorie Avenue she called and stated her support about the extended hours, however, expressed her concern that she wasn't comfortable with alcohol being served at the events. And then uh, Dee Carey, she's here tonight, but she also called to state concern about safety of persons inside the building. The uh, exit doors have to be, must be allowed to uh, open without any obstruction outside for persons to exit. Alcohol at the events is a concern. Uh, parking in the residential neighborhood shouldn't be taken up by event goers. Residents should be able to park in front of their, in front of or near their homes. And uh, again, she's, uh, she's here tonight. The uh, last piece of correspondence, uh, Mr. Gilcrest will address uh, during public, uh, public testimony. And uh, he's gonna address it because when we printed it out earlier, uh, the right-hand margin got locked off. So he's gonna you know, finish the thoughts. <coughs> Thank you. That concludes the report. Thank you. Uh, does do board members have any questions regarding the staff report? Questions of uh, Planner Panorama? I have a question. 
Yes, uh, Member Member Mazzetti. Thank you. So, on the parking proposed uh, lift of the 9:30 van on East 14th, we're saying 12 a.m. That's exactly the time the events would end. Yes. So, does it yes. really need to be 12 or 12:15 to get people time to get to their cars or 12:30? Oh, all right. I, I don't think work? the police will be uh, be that that strict. In. I think when it gets out at 12, you know, people. You know, we haven't coordinated that with the police department, but we can't make the request for engineering to make it to 1230, but I don't think it's something that will be uh, ticketing on, on East 14th, because there's really no impact or residences on uh, East 14th having the 12 a.m. versus 1230 a.m. Okay. Thank you. I have another question. Yes, Member Mazzetti. So on the... Um, Recommendation to have just four events a month. How was that arrived? How was that number arrived at? Is that enough for a business to be able to make enough money to be viable? Yeah, that was something uh, discussed between uh, the applicant and staff. You know, have, that would be you know, one a week. We, uh, you know, we we believe it is. And right now, I think that's what the calendar is very close to. Okay, so the applicant had yes, it was discussed. Yes, right. Thanks, Member Bacon. Um, I had a question about the staff's approach to monitoring this, of the conditions. Uh, you mentioned the staff report reconsidering this in six months. So, in the interim. Is the staff's approach reactionary or proactive? In other words, are you going to wait to see if someone complains and then you're going to go out and no. investigate that? Or is somebody going to attend a couple of the events to see that the conditions are in place that should be? Or how's that going to work? Yes, at, at the moment, there, there, are, there are city staff that go either to the police department or someone when there's a scheduled uh, event will uh, you know, will we'll drive by and observe uh, you know attendance or or the activity, but the city will, will be proactive. The city's not going to wait for six months to uh, you know to address I impacts that may uh, that may occur. It's something that we will deal with uh, promptly. In terms of uh, the permit for alcohol. Is that something that ABC polices, or does the city? Uh, it would be both. Okay. It would be both. So thank you. <coughs> I'm Member Mazzetti. Thank you. Uh, so I'm curious to know how many other similar types of businesses have had to have a six month review. Is that customary? Is that standard operating procedure? Is that something yes, in this situation? Yes, it has from multi purpose rooms at a church to daycares, to automotive care, uh, to the fast food uses. Uh, it has been customary for a handful of the conditional use permits. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Member Minietta. Thank you. Thank you for your, uh, your report, you. Elmer. Um, first question I have that deals with the time, sort of connected with um, Member Mazzini's question um, about the uh, parking uh, from your report you said that it you said that the uh, that's an, an outdated basically it's an outdated uh, parking restriction for the for the block and so uh, to change it let's say from 9 to 12 so long as there's no significant cost of that change I would always recommend just eliminating the parking restrictions altogether uh, it's just as a consideration, uh, just eliminate the, the the signage and just leave it free parking. And then, because then on uh, New Year's Day, and again, um, the course concern about uh, patrons being ticketed, that um, on New Year's Day, they would be there to 1, 1 30, whatever, you know, finding out. And so you won't want, you know, you don't, you, 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 for one day of the year, there'll be a risk of, of getting ticketed, although I can see that the city Police department would be reasonable about that. I'm just trying to make it uh, firm up the uh, the understanding. Yes, the 
let's see, a majority of the signs are are usable and a decal can replace the 9.30 with the, uh, the 12 a.m. There's only a half a dozen or, or a few more, maybe eight that have to be uh, replaced, but I think our traffic engineers, it is something we can discuss further with the police and engineering transportation department, but I think they would still like to maintain a sign to prevent overnight parking on East 14th Street. Chair recognizes Member Palmer. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, in reference to the to the uh, uh, ex exit doors in case of emergencies, yes. the French doors. Um, I know you indicated that there would be some uh, verbiage not to block the door, a sign maybe out yes. as the exterior, but I uh, but the bollards will be installed oh, on yes. this approval. Yes. So you'll have two, not only the bollards, mallards, whatever you call. Them, but also the, uh, the the signage, right? Not oh, to block the uh, yes, not to block it. The okay. ballers that physically prevent a, a vehicle from pulling up and preventing a door to to swing open. Okay. okay. Um, and uh, reading well, there was a question about uh, security. It uh, in the uh, materials that we were given to to review. In reference to security, it said, um, I'm quoting, one security personnel up to 20. I didn't really understand that. In well, reference to, it, it was in a it was in a draft plan that was prepared by SIS, the, the security company. They could range, depending upon the type of event, you could range from one. They're prepared to provide service for one security guard to, to up to 20. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then finally, um, again, reviewing the uh, material, um, in the event that the city, you know, rescinds this modified CUP with cause, would the previous CUP um, still be enforced? It would be in effect, yes, the, the previous one for the computer service, computer repair, yes, that would still be in effect. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Member Palmer, did you still have a question? Um, yeah, I, thank you, Elmer, uh, for your presentation. I do have a question again about the parking um, limitation. How far down the street does that <coughs> 930 limitation go? Is it all along um, East 14th in that area? Yes, it goes up to the post office to the north and to the front of Pat, okay. Pat Boys and CVS to the south. From the post office to Pet Boys. Yes. Okay, yes. So. That's where I uh, previously uh, counted up the 160 spaces you know, from the from the work session. Okay. Yeah, because I think the point of allowing uh, additional the parking there was to alleviate the parking in the neighborhoods, which was a concern of the residents in that area. Yes. So it makes you know complete sense to do as much as possible to extend those hours for parking, even if it has to be 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the morning, and then there won't be any overnight parking allowed. Um, you know, so I, 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 I would like to see that as well, as um, uh, was stated before. I, I think this is a great proposal, so I, I don't really have a whole lot of other questions for you at this point. Um, I was very impressed by our visit at the extent of equipment and the commitment that Mr. Dillon has put into this effort. Um, and I really would like to see something like this happening. Thank you. Vice Chair Houston. Most of the questions I had have already been asked in English. Elmer, thank you uh, very much. This was really comprehensive. I know it was a lot of work. I appreciate it. I think the um, only question that I have that wasn't already asked and answered is on the uh, limitations on the alcohol where it states that um, about the fundraising events being limited to a maximum of two per month and under the frequency section we have said that um, there'll be a maximum of four per month and it may include up to three shows in a day. I just want to make, make it clear that the assumption I'm making in this where it says two per month on the um, alcohol fundraising events 
that it would not be a situation where there would be more than one fundraising event taking place within a single day to where then that changes. Oh, let's see. Can you, can you repeat that? Yes. Um, we have said that the alcohol fundraising events shall be limited to a maximum of two per month. However, in the frequency section of the presentation, we talk about how within a given day there can be up to three performances, if you will, in a given day. Right. So when it comes to these fundraising events, will that be one fundraising event in a single day to where there couldn't be more than one stacking up? So we would do a fundraising event that would have alcohol from noon to four, and then you have another fundraising event in that day, and that would that constitute the two? You know what I mean? So yes, that, that's my question because I got. I just want to make that really clear in this. Yes, um, I, I think we can clear it out by correcting it so that if there are three events in a day, it's just for one. If that's the the board's intent, that it's not for the whole day, <coughs> three, the matinee, and the middle show, and the, 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 the late show. Exactly. Uh, I just don't want it to be one. where that alcohol <coughs> piece of it gets to be muddied up with the frequency of the other types of, in, in our minds, what is the other types of events. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions for uh, staff? I have one question. Um, is there anything that um, the police or city enforcement can do to prevent parking uh, on private lots? There is a letter attached to the agenda that, that was outside today from the owner of a restaurant indicating that um, there's parking that his in his parking lot patrons park in his lot. I'm assuming that's a private parking lot. Is there anything that can be done to prevent people who are not his patrons to park in that lot from parking in that lot. In the private lot, if it's posted, but I think what is described by the restaurant owner is public parking in front of the dim, uh, the Prince Dim Sum restaurant on East 14th Street. That's pu it's public parking. Okay, it's public parking in the front. But the the private parking area can be posted and, and enforced. That's the one to the south end of the Eden Center block. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, Member Mendieta? Well, in reference to, to that uh, point about the uh, parking in, on, in a private parking lot, it's something that the owner of the property should post and enforce. The, um, the restaurant owner, owner can keep a track of who's parking on, on the slots Yes. That are for private parking, and if someone's you know there too long and they have no, there's no evidence that they're a customer, yes. or even a customer of a couple of other the 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 uh, businesses in that strip mall, it it can be towed by yes, that's my understanding by the owner, owner, but that's not that we have to post any kind of signage or anything like that. Yes, that's it's not our responsibility. No, it, it is the property owner. Uh, yes, a member making. I mean, member. Um, oh. um, sorry. And I want to make it clear that if there is public park, park, parking, that he doesn't have the right to, you know, discourage the, his, the, his patrons from parking just because it's in proximity to their business. You know, if there's public parking, then it's public and anybody That's can correct. park there. Yeah. Uh, the chair recognizes member Macon. Yeah, his letter makes that pretty clear because he's talking about the main parking lot adjacent to my restaurant. So he's talking about the private lot that's in front of that, those restaurants. And I think the advice may be back to him that if he's concerned about that, he has the right to post that. But the, 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 those spaces in front, though, are, are public. He's talking about the main parking lot adjacent to his restaurant. There's a, there's a parking lot that goes right across the front of those. Right. Restaurants oh, that is not in the street, so that's what he's concerned about. I think the advice back to him is, if he's concerned about that, there's a way to post that, and you can do that. So for for clarification, let's see, go to 
for clarification, you know, what appears to be the Eden Center's parking lot? That's, that's I believe public. that's what he's referring to yes. because he says adjacent to his building. Adjacent, that's but that's public. Those are those are not private spaces. There's like a uh, uh, barrier between the street. Right, and there's a barrier. That's still within the, the so within public right. On the other right. side of that that right. barrier is public parking. Public. Yes. Wow. Is this this is the private area? That's the private lot, and all the uh, diagonal parking yeah. in front and the parallel spaces along the median are other public spaces. Even on the inside of the median. Even inside of the median are those are public spaces. Okay. So, well, did, did anybody speak to this gentleman after the letter was written? No, I, I haven't called. Okay. Oh, well, I, I mean, I think that's something we should I, follow up on. I just called back prior. It was the same uh, comment. I did return the call for the work session. Okay. Uh, okay. The chair recognizes Member Mendieta. I'm looking at the letter right now. Yeah. I think the section where he talks about the parking I'll read it right now. It says, my main concern is that the main parking lot adjacent to my restaurant building is made available for my customers, my staff, and myself to use supposedly. So, you know, public parking is not made for his staff or his patrons, but the parking lot that uh, runs with the strip mall are. And so that's that's my conclusion that he's talking about the parking lot at the south end. spaces that pertain to the strip mall. Yes. Yes. But, you know, that are, yeah. Uh, member uh, Mazzetti? If it's public parking, if it's public parking, no matter, you can park there and go to a business three blocks down. It's public parking. You can't dictate that those spaces are for him and his employees and all that. <coughs> I don't think he gets that from the previous communication. Yes, the, these spaces, if you want to go to the international market, you could park in, in front of the Prince Dim Sum restaurant. Or if you you wanted to uh, you know, go to one of the other businesses here, the Eden Center Park in front, and then go run an errand at the post office, stay park there, and you know, then come back. But those are, it's, those are public spaces. It, along the median on East 14th Street and on the inside part of the median. Okay, um, the Vice Chair Houston, did you wish to make a comment? Yeah, I was just uh, I was just going to say that it, it sounds like this can be cleared up once you recontact him and explain yes. exactly how this works. I, I feel like this will be a quick fix. Thanks. Okay, uh, Member Macon. I would just ask that when you meet with him, you explain the public policy nature of it so that he's not in a beef with, you know, the Bow Theater because it's not an issue of a conflict with them. If it's public parking, it's public parking. It doesn't matter where, where people are parking and where they're going to. And so his problem with that shouldn't be reflected back on the Bow. It's just the course of him understanding Yes. the city's policy as far as parking goes. I think that will go a long way. Okay, any additional questions? Uh, well, at this, thank you very much. Uh,